Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another uh, devotion here. Pastor Phil Rigdon, St. John Lutheran Church, Kendallville, Indiana. And hope you are doing well today and rejoicing in the Lord. Uh, today we want to take a look at something that's a little bit obscure, but I think I think we can uh, we can get to it, um, and I have confidence that that you will certainly understand. So today we want to take it Zechariah uh, chapter three, and that's something, of course, that we a lot of times don't get to because uh, the Old Testament is a little bit um, less accessible than the New. Uh, but what you want to think about here is the fact that the uh, people of Israel have been exiled and they have come back to Jerusalem and now they are rebuilding the temple. And uh, so we, we learn about this scene with the, uh, with the uh, high priest Joshua. All right, so let's jump right in here and uh, let me share God's word with you. Here we go. All right, uh, whoops. Now, um, first of all, to clarify, when we see Joshua, this is not Joshua who led the people into Jericho. It's not Joshua who, uh, who succeeded um, Moses, all right? This is another Joshua, uh, and he is the high priest. And so what does it say? A vision of Joshua the high priest. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, and Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. All right, so picture, first of all, um, a courtroom. And let me, let me deal, first of all, with the word Joshua. Um, this is real important to get this, all right? So the word Joshua uh, is the same as Jesus. Uh, the word Joshua in the Old Testament, um, that is Hebrew. And uh, so we get that in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, uh, it's pronounced Jesus. So Joshua and the word uh, and the name Jesus are the same. And uh, that name means the one who saves. All right. The one who saves. Uh, so when we say Joshua, Jesus was probably pronounced Yeshua uh, in the New Testament or in Aramaic. OK, so connect that there. Then uh, this is one of the harder concepts to get. Uh, oftentimes we use in, um, in kind of our technical language in the Bible is the pre-incarnate Christ. And what that means simply is that there were times in the Old Testament where Jesus would appear, but remember that Jesus didn't take on flesh until uh, he was conceived by the Holy Ghost and born or uh, in the flesh of the Virgin Mary um, in, in Matthew or in, in um, you know, when we talk about Christmas and so forth. So, but Jesus was there. Remember, Jesus is God and he is eternal. So Jesus is present through the whole Old Testament. And so we use this, uh, this term pre-incarnate Christ to simply say that Jesus sometimes manifests himself or shows himself uh, before he took on flesh. All right, so many times when we hear the angel of the Lord, uh, that's referring to Jesus. So connect that here. Um, the high priest standing before the Lord, Jesus, with Satan standing at his right hand to accuse him. Very important to connect the angel of the Lord with Jesus. All right, an image here that will help us, a courtroom scene. Uh, you see where the judge sits and the defendant, the prosecutor, the jury, uh, and the witness, all right, kind of keep that in mind. And then uh, the Lord said to Satan, the Lord rebuke you, O Satan, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this a brand plucked from the fire? All right, so a couple of things to connect. First of all, Satan is there, all right, and the Lord, this is the angel of the Lord, says, Satan, rebuke you. The Lord has chosen Jer Jerusalem, rebuke you. In other words, Jesus is saying uh, that I have chosen Jerusalem. They are my chosen people, all right? And so I'm protecting them from you. And he says, Joshua here, this high priest, is he not a brand plucked from the fire? So what you want to connect here is the idea that Joshua is someone who's been accused. And uh, he is, he, before this, he is, he is, so he's in the fire. He's on the hot seat, as we say. Uh, he's like an iron that is pulled from the fire, all right? An image to help us here. So you picture Joshua as kind of this piece of iron that is in the fire, uh, is being melted. Uh, so, you know, all those things you want to connect with him. 
And Jesus says, hey, Joshua here is somebody who was pulled out of the fire. I'm going to pull him out of the fire. You want to connect yourself with that too. All right, verse 3. Now Joshua was standing before the angel, the Lord, clothed with filthy, filthy garments. And the angel said to those who were standing before him, remove the filthy garments from him. And to him he said, behold, I have taken your iniquity away from you and will clothe you with pure vestments. All right, so essentially what we want to say here is that here's Joshua. He is accused. So he's on the hot seat in the fire and he's got filthy garments. You can probably guess the filthy garments represent sin. Your sin, my sin, Joshua's sin. But what does Jesus say? Behold, I have taken your iniquity away from you, and I will clothe you with pure garments. So what is essentially going on here? Uh, what's going on is that Jesus is there, the angel of the Lord, and he says, Satan, get out of the way, because I have chosen Joshua, I've chosen uh, Jerusalem, and I've saved them. And uh, what's going to happen? I'm going to take away their sin, their filthy garments, and instead dress them in pure garments. In other words, Jesus is saying, I'm taking away your sin, and I'm going to wrap you in my righteousness. I will clothe you in the pure vestments of my righteousness. And that's what Jesus did. He died on the cross for your sin, and he rose again, that he would take away your filthy garments and instead give you his righteousness. All right, it's a beautiful image. Uh, so uh, I put this in there just to kind of connect that uh, so we are no longer in filthy garments, but instead wrapped uh, in the righteousness, the purity of Jesus Christ. All right. Luke 15, uh, this is another connection here. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Connects us to Jesus in the parable of the prodigal son, where the son has sinned and he comes back and the father is waiting for him, not to condemn him, but he says, bring the best robe. Verse five then back in Zechariah, and I said, let them put on a clean turban on his head so that they uh, put a clean turban on his head and clothed him with garments. And the angel of the Lord, the Lord Jesus was standing by. All right, so remember the high priest, he was designated or marked by this turban. All right, so to show him as the high priest. Uh, so Again, kind of focusing on this, this idea, and let me close it out here before uh, I get too very long. Probably have already. So just to review uh, what's happening in the courtroom. Picture yourself as the defendant, just like Joshua the high priest. Here comes Satan and he says, hey, you know what? All right, Pastor Rigdon is a sinner. He doesn't deserve any sort of clemency or mercy. Not at all, he's condemned. And then Jesus comes along and he, and he says to the judge, hey, you know what? You know what? I'm going to take care of this for Pastor Rigdon. And how am I going to do it? I'm going to die on the cross and rise again. So I can take off the garments of sin off of you and off of me and instead wrap us in Jesus Christ through faith. So now the judge looks at you and he looks at me and he says, you're forgiven. Right? You're not guilty anymore. I've taken away your guilt, and now I have given you the blessing of forgiveness and everlasting life. I pray this has been a blessing to you as always, and blessings to you until we come again. Take care.